Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Salty Cola, if you didn't know. And if you'd like to stick around after watching this video, you can always subscribe. Or you leave a like, even if you're not gonna watch the video. <laughs> please, <laughs> please. Today in this video, we are going to go over how I made my mask for my Samurai cosplay. This is her dysmorphia form. I lied, she's very cute. <laughs> not, yeah, yeah, no, the, the, her, her moon scorch form. A hottie. <laughs> Make the face. I did that already, like seven years ago. <laughs> I will link a video in the description on how to make a, like a mask like that, but I'm not gonna show you how to make one here. Anyways, you guys, you guys don't want to hear me talk, so you guys can get into it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to work because I've already done all this. But you know, it is what it is. First I started out with my supplies, which was my mask and a circular disc on top of some cardboard. Uh, you can also use a hat for this, like the brim of the hat and then also the head of the hat to outline where your head should go. Make sure it's a really well fitted hat. Um, and here I am taping the disc to the cardboard so that it doesn't move as I trace it like I am doing now. Remove the disc and then place the head in. Trace the head, uh, obviously. And then I cut out the circle first before outlining everything else, and then I and then I outlined it. You don't you can do that in either order. And then I cut it out with a I don't even know what that's called. What the blade is called. <laughs> you can also use scissors for that. You don't have to um, use what I'm using, obviously. And then I just popped it out. Like I didn't want to cut all the way through it because this cardboard is pretty thick because I wanted it to be very uh, structurally sound. I just continued to do that. Be careful of those tiny ones at the very bottom. They're very flimsy. So then I placed my head in there and then glued it down with some hot glue. Any glue will do. Uh, just make sure it dries all the way. I used hot glue because the mask already had hot glue on top of it, so I was like, well, I might as well just, <laughs> might as well just commit, okay? And then I hot glued around it to give it a little more support so that it stays a little better, you know, just, just in case, you know, it's, it's one of those just in case things. I flatten some of that glue down with my hand. Don't do that, it's hot. I just can't feel anything anymore. So it didn't matter to me. <laughs> then I took some model magic and made a long strip and then shaped it to the the like support tendril thingamabobbers. That's what I'm gonna be calling them, the support tendril thingamabobbers. And then I, I molded it onto the cardboard and especially along the side, you want to get the you want to get the side of the circle all divvied up because you're it's supposed to look like flesh is um, surrounding a large circle. That's what it's supposed to look like. Um, and then you're also gonna want to smooth it against the mask as much as you can. Cut off all the extra bits that you need to. Like, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Model Magic is very easy to work with, I would say, and it's very malleable. Like, obviously. And then I glued it, like, for extra support, just to, just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere, I glued it down with some hot glue on both sides. I also got underneath where the actual tendril is. Um, I glued it on top of it for some reason. That was weird. <laughs> They didn't really do much, honestly. See, and there I go. I'm gonna pull that up and then glue it right on the edge there, just so it, it it's not going anywhere. And then I continued to do that process with the rest of them. I just went as I went. I just went as I would. Yeah, there we go. Um, and I also pushed the middles in so that they like gathered more in the middle of the tendril so that it has more shape. Oh, there's my cat. Look at my cat. Isn't he a baby? I've shown you him. I was like, this is my baby. Look at him. He's just so cute. 
Okay, and back back to business. Gluing all of that down, making sure everything's sound. Oh, look! Look how cool it looks. And then I just removed all of the extra model magic from the back. And then I put model magic on the side of the ring so that it was all smooth instead of cardboardy. But I didn't do that on the inside because you're not really going to see it. Uh, to begin painting, I started out with a peach base. Obviously, that's what I'm doing here. And then um, I, this is me outlining the eye on where the eye is going to go. And then I went in with a darker red color, uh, more of a rusty color. It actually looks like rusty from Bluey, Bluey's coat, you know. Um, and then I just I just went over all of that. And don't don't worry if you get some of the red on the gray ring. Also, paint the ring gray because that's I I didn't realize the ring was gray, but it, it is. It one hundred percent is. Um, and then I took some brighter red and took it to the sides of the tendrils. To give it some more shape and then took another bright red and put it on the side next to the head and also a little bit on the head again to give it more dimension and then go in with a darker and do this darker red and do the same thing um yep just and then i went in with a lighter color on the face and just circled around blending as best i could it's okay if it looks a little messy. Flesh looks a little messy, I'm gonna be honest with you. The places that you definitely wanna highlight with a lighter color are the brow bone, which I was just doing. Oh, there I am. The nose and the chin, which you just saw. The nose and the chin are especially light um, in the artwork, so make sure to highlight that. Also, I would um, carve out some color with um, near the mouth, because you're going to put a big ol' smile there. There I am putting more highlight on. And then I'm just taking a darker color and blending the lighter color in, because it, lo it looked a little unnatural, and I, I wanted it to look very natural. And then I took some red in the, in the other frame and made it look more like blood. Um, and this is me outlining a smile with a gray, a very light gray, but still it's gray, not white. And then I'm carving out the mouth again with a lighter color and um, in a, oh, and I'm contouring the other eye so that it has more contrast with the white eye. I'm highlighting the forehead right there and then I'm coming back with a darker color to the mouth to give it more of a like a mouth look <laughs> instead of it's just like diamond of white on this face, you know? Um, and then I went in with like a dark purpley brown reddish color in the center of the mouth because it is an open mouth smile. Then I'm just going to go around the mouth and shade it a little bit more so that it looks more natural and less cartoonish. Um, I'm going to go in and outline those teeth a little better so that they look- <laughs> there I go in with the eye. The eye looks crazy. It does get fixed later by making it smaller instead of that big because it, it looks- it looks- <laughs> it looks so cartoony right there. It, do, it looks still cartoony in the final product. I also shaded the bottom of the eye quite a bit um, and then I went in on the back with some silver uh, to the ring and like, don't be afraid to get messy. You know, it's it's okay. It's gonna be okay. Yeah, there I am. I'm just, and I'm also making sure to get the inside with that gray, because even though you don't see it that well, it's it's still kind of visible. And then I went in with a the rusty red that I went in in the beginning. And then I took some darker red, and I did some shading, just to show that like, there is a head that goes there. Um, and then I go in with more red. You see me going in. And then I cut some elastic, put some elastic, and then color it with black paint. You should probably use fabric paint for this, but I did not. Um, and whenever you're sizing that elastic, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to go ahead and stretch it a little bit, um, and cut it while it's stretched. Not cut it while it's stretched, but cut it along a line that's been stretched. 
and make sure to paint both sides because like it's not going to go all the way through and I didn't show this but I did heat seal this um, so I waited for it to dry and then I went in with a heat gun but you can also go in with like a hair dryer and so oh there's my cat again um, or an iron that's what I was trying to say and then I went in with a clear coat and then I didn't see that I didn't get that on camera very well so I showed you the back uh, and then I glued the elastic with some hot glue onto the mask uh, double folding that just just for some security, you know um, And I'm gonna do it a little bit above the eyes See and here it is on I could not find my wig for the life of me So you're just gonna have to trust my uh, That band is gonna go across the top of my head, but the bangs should cover it on the wig I don't know where my wig was it was gone Okay, so that was how I made my Fear and Hunger 2 Terminator Dysmorphia mask thing. Um, if you'd like to catch me here again and want more like tutorials and general cosplay things, like cosplay thingamabobbers I'm doing, like um, Comic Con vlogs or, or walkthroughs with my other cosplays, those will all be posted here on this channel on Wednesday. You'll also get shorts on Monday and Friday. If you'd like to stick around, I'd suggest subscribing and hitting the notification bell. <laughs> if you don't want to, that's fine. That's fine, just leave, leave a like because I'm, I'm, I'm just a cool boy. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll stop subjecting you to my, to my face and my voice. Happy Valentine's Day, and I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Love you.